Hello guys and girls, welcome back once again to the Land Rover Toolbox videos. This is the fine art of Land Rover maintenance. In this video we're going to show you about power bleeding brakes and this is with the assistance of a computer or an interface to be able to set off your modulator so you can bleed brakes correctly. This applies to ABS systems only however, I must stress this. It's fairly standard practice with hydraulic brakes these days to use an interface device and activate the ABS modulator to be able to bleed your brakes out. Since you guys are only interested in the Defender and the Discovery ranges of vehicles, I'm going to add here that the braking systems can be different the way they're bled out. However, the links will tell you exactly where to start and where to finish and which calipers to bleed up first and we will go through the sequence as we go through this video. Manufacturers recommend changing brake fluid every two years. This is because of hygroscopia. That's moisture that accumulates in the brake system and boils at a lower point. We have a gauge here that tells us it's already dangerously high. So what we're going to do, and we'll be skipping between a Defender and a Discovery, is get it up on axle stands and bleed it out properly. As you'll notice we have standard axle stands for cars and it is on level ground. There's no need to put the handbrake on here because the wheels are off the deck. And for reference here is your modulator valve which you do not have to touch externally. You do need an interface to set off the ABS modulator, uh, a spanner and make sure that all your bleed nipples are free. Sometimes it's helpful to use a socket on the bleed nipple instead of a spanner and you can see here Steve actually had a problem with this one however it did come undone. You can see the state of the nipple here so this was changed. You can see by the flow here that there's a fair amount of power and the fluid gets pushed at a great rate. Okay well it's worth noting that you will also need an external power supply or a very well charged battery or two batteries since the ABS modulator will take a fair bit of power. You can see at the top here that the condition of the fluid is pretty bad. Steve has a vacuum pump which sucks the reservoir fluid out. You can see that. And this is the smeg. There's a lot of damaging elements that are in this brake fluid, especially if it's been in there more than two years. You only need to compare the color of fresh fluid to see the difference. <laughs> Okay, now we've got that out of the way, we can now strike up the Brit Park Diagnostics interface. And that's clicking on it, bring it up, and then you always have to, for some reason, um, accept this warning, which is just to get them out of the poo. Okay, so we'll go on to start first of all, click on that. If all's well, it will connect to the vehicle interface, however, sometimes you have to wait a little while. This is Defender, and you should know this by now, your types of Land Rover. So, clicking on the Defender icon in the Lynx interface, going to ABS, click on that, and Wabco D, which is the system, and it'll ask you to turn the ignition on. OK, that gives you a product number, and it's telling you what's what. Here's the Discovery 2 pre-facelift with a uh, suspension lift. The sequence is very much the same, clicking on to Discovery 2 for vehicle and you'll have a little bit more here, ABS, and it gives you the same WAB code D, goes through the same sequence of turning ignition on and then communicating fine. Once we get to a certain point, we then need to go up into the special functions bar at the top. If you can see up here, special functions, click on that. Programming, bleeding, or ABS CM data, bleeding. Click to continue, yes. What you'd have probably noticed by now, there's no text on the prompt. This was a glitch with my computer and not the software. Anyway, let us continue. I turn the ignition off. Follow the directions very clearly, what this is telling you. The next thing it's gonna ask you to do is perform manual bleed procedure in the instructions, then continue, so you confirm that. Turn your ignition back on again. The first operation is to bleed the modulator, and this is not the calipers. So, 
click to continue, press and hold brake pedal during sequence, like so, and this will bleed the modulator unit. Once you've done that, release the brake pedal in this manner here. Okay, so far so good. You have just bled out the modulator. Now, the next thing to do is answer the question. What's it asking you? Completed cycles, do you want it again or do you want to continue to bleed out the whole system? We're gonna do the modulator sequence once again, so you will repeat this. And this is just the modulator. This will push any air out of the modulator first, which is like a pre-bleed. And then when it prompts you, release the brake pedal and confirm. Okay, so once that's done, second cycle completed. Another cycle, yes or no? I'm gonna go for no, click that, and we've completed a modulator bleed process. The next one is a power bleed, and this again is following the instructions. Front left wheel, or left front wheel power bleed. This is the first point of bleeding on the system. This is different depending on the vehicle that you have. So if you were paying attention, Steve cracked it off, okayed it, power bled it, and then tightened the nipple back up again. So what we've done, it will tell you that it's been power bled, and you get an option to do it again, or to continue to the next position, and that's what we're going to do. Which in this case is right rear wheel and power bleed. So we'll go through the process again, clicking, carrying it on power bleed and then if we want to do it again then it's up to us just remember that you need to top up your reservoir quite often because it pushes a huge amount of fluid through you'll probably notice on the interface it says discovery 2 ABS however we are working on a defender at this point but to drive the point home this is what you're doing basically and it is that easy much better and you can do it by yourself so once it's all bled you complete you can either go through it again or put the wheels back on I've got to admit that the pedal already is a lot harder which means that a successful bleed so getting the wheels back on um, making sure the axle stands have been taken away and you can see the torque wrench hanging off the wheel nut there that's the other thing you need to do which is imperative torque all your wheel nuts up wait half an hour and then go round them again and re-torque them after that it's a brake test to make sure that your brakes are working fine so there you go easy huh <laughs>